Hello everyone. Our task for today is troubleshoot multi-area OSP FV3. A large organization has recently decided to implement a multi-area OSP FV3 network. As a result, the network is no longer functioning correctly and communication through much of the network has failed. As the network administrator you must troubleshoot the problem, fix the multi-area OSP FV3 implementation, and restore communication throughout the network. To do this, you are given the addressing table above, showing all of the routers in the network including their interface IPv6 addresses. You are told that in Area 1, R2 is unable to form OSPF adjacencies. In Area 0 and Area 2, three routers ABR2, R3 and R4 have not been able to form OSPF adjacencies. Lastly, ABR1 and R1 have not received default root information. Part 1. Use show commands to troubleshoot OSP FV3 Area 1. Step 1. Check the R2 configuration in Area 1. Because R2 is not forming an adjacency with R1, console into R2 and check its interface IP address configuration and its multi-area OSP FV2 configuration. Use the show running config command to view the configuration. As you can see, R2SOSPFV3 routing process configuration is present and correct. OSPFV3 has been activated on the G0-0 and loopback1 interfaces and they have been set to the correct area. If R2SOSPFV3 configurations are correct, it is possible that OSPFV3 has not been configured on the R1G0-0 interface. Console into R1 and issue a show running config command to check the G0-0 interface for the IPv6 OSP10 Area 1 configuration. As you can see, R2SOSPFV3 routing process configuration is present and correct. OSPFV3 has been activated on the G0-0 interface and set to Area 1. It is possible that the hello interval and dead interval timers have been altered from their default values of 10 seconds and 40 seconds respectively. A timer mismatch can cause the routers to not form adjacencies. If the dead interval timer is not 4 times the value of the hello interval timer, that could also cause the routers to not form adjacencies. Check the hello interval and dead interval timer values on R1 and R2. On R1, the hello interval and dead interval timer was set to the default value. But on R2, the hello interval has been set to 20, and the dead interval has been set to 100. Correct the hello interval and dead interval timer configuration errors on R2. The neighbor ID is 1.1.1.1. Step 2. Check the router configurations in Area 2 starting with ABR2. 
because it was reported that routers ABR2, R3 and R4 were all unable to form OSPFV3 adjacencies, console it to the ABR2 border router to see why it is unable to form an adjacency with ASBR router. ABR2 SOSPFV3 routing process configuration is present and correct. OSPFV3 has been activated on the S0-0-1N, G0-1 interfaces, and they have been set to the correct areas. OSPFV3 requires the presence of a 32-bit autodecimal router ID, because ABR2 has no IPv4 addresses assigned to any of its interfaces, a router ID needs to be manually configured. Configure ABR2 with a 6.6.6.6 router ID. So, the 7.7.7.7N, 3.3.3.3 neighbor ID have been detected. Check that it R4 has provided root information for its connected networks to the OSPFV3 topology database. Based on router link states, we got three advertising routers in area 2 and R4 with 4.4.4.4 neighbor ID is one of them. Step 3. Check ASBR for OSPFV3 default root distribution. Because ASBR is the edge router, it should have a static IPv6 default route configured. If so, it can distribute that route using OSPFV3 and a default information originate command. There is an IPv6 default route configured on ASBR. But the OSPFV3 routing process configuration doesn't have a default information originate line present. On ASBR, add a default information originate command to the OSPFV3 routing process. So now, the default route was discovered through OSPFV3 in the IPv6 routing tables of ABR1 and ABR2.
That's all. Thank you for watching.